taking a look on a few diagrams here which we represent different uh, installations and how to dose uh, hypochlorite. I'm taking here the example directly of the C-chlor, which will take uh, a few more uh, details later on in the presentation. But uh, if you have a, a seawater intake, for, for instance, where you're capturing the water directly from the sea, and I know for a fact that if, if you're taking water directly from the sea here, normally you have uh, some sort of screening process that sucks the water through a water uh, uh, intake pipeline, also called a, a tunnel. You probably have one to some sort of equalizing tank and then you pump the water to screen or filter it and that that will lead to your systems. With seawater electrochlorination, we will be producing hypochlorite solution of about 0.2% concentration, which is a very benign type of a disinfection uh, product. You would be dosing those here on the entrance, on this near the screens. You will be dosing those before the drum screens. This could also, depending on your application, be dosed directly on the equalizing tank or maybe some other portion later on. Um, if you don't do this, you are risking uh, to have a situation like the pictures I showed you uh, before. This is uh, another part of the processes. Once uh, you receive the seawater from, uh, from the water intake, you will be using this seawater uh, in your own processes. So here we have on the title power generation process, but this actually could be any sort of uh, system you have that you're using the, the seawater for for example, uh, heat exchange. So you use here the heat exchange, the heat exchangers to use the water uh, to cool down or heat up your system, depending on what you have. And then the water just uh, with a different temperature will be disposed to the outfall. Here is where is the sea chlor is located. Once the seawater is screened or filtered, it will be fed with seawater and will be also be fed, it's not represented here, but will also be fed with uh, electrical current. And with these two raw materials, the seawater will then be producing the hypochlorite solution. I'll go into a little bit more details on the process uh, after I'm finished with the diagrams. Another example here, uh, LNG terminal. You have uh, the ships arriving with the LNG, which are going to be stored in uh, LNG tanks. The LNG will then move into a vaporizer, which will work uh, to completely vaporize the system that then is going to be moving for the natural gas consumer. Here we represent it uh, in a truck, but it is, could also be a, a local consumer even inside your installations if that's the case. To use as a, the heat exchange here, in this case, the water would be the heater. The seawater is being used. We are not representing here, but this will also be a seawater intake. The water will be then pumped inside the vaporizer and then goes out and disposed into the outfall. In this case, the seachlor will be also receiving the seawater. The electrical current here will then be generating the hypochlorite solution, which would be used for disinfecting the seawater before going into the heat exchange or whatever process you have. It's not so represented here, but also everything related to the intake will also require disinfection. Another example here on a desalination process. So again, take into account that the water is coming from a water intake and is already filtered and screened. The seawater would then feed a reverse osmosis system, which would then separate the brine from the permeate on this fashion. This, in this case here, the seawater is also feeding the seachlor, which will be generating this 0.2% uh, hypochlorite solution for the disinfection of the complete water intake. Here, a word of caution, membranes for reverse osmosis normally are sensitive to chlorine, any type of chlorine. So it, it is actually a good idea to install here uh, maybe some sort of dosing for uh, the dechlorination before reaching the reverse osmosis. This could be anything like uh, sulfur dioxide or uh, some sort of bisulfite in order to protect the reverse osmosis system. If the water is used for drinking water, you have to go through a remineralization process and disinfection again. In the case of disinfection, another word of caution, um, seawater is not very well suited for that of all the impurities you might have uh, in the seawater, in the raw seawater itself. 
So we recommend brine electrochlorination for the disinfection of well drinking water. In case you also need this type of application, the NORA also works with that and you just uh, write to us and we'll be uh, more than glad and support you with whatever technology you might need.